Hey, hello and welcome back. This is the Ultimate Ladybug course video number 20 and I just hit 8,000 subscribers. Can you imagine? Who would thought that? Thanks everyone for the support. In the last video, we looked at the view analysis tool in Ladybug and we only looked at it in a very broad terms, just how it works. Now in this video, we'll dive a bit deeper because we need to really discuss and see what we can do with it. And there are many, view, many ways in how you can use it. And I will go for one as an example so you get your creative, your creative uh, juices flowing. All right, let's jump right in. All right, we are here back with our project in Rwanda. It's a project I started one year ago. It's a very slow process. It's about exploring design thinking and uh, also Ladybug. And we're still stuck in Ladybug. It's crazy, but it's good because we can really uh, think it through properly without being disturbed by anything else. This is a project it runs next to my day-to-day -day job. So it's also like a slower process. Anyway, last time we discussed this tool here, the Ladybug view percent percentage. And I used a different model just to explain the different options we have within here. But I want to go back to our model and explain a bit more what we can actually do with it. We haven't really discussed what we can do with it. It's obvious, but there are a lot of different ways and creative ways in how you can actually use this tool. For example, determine where are windows, where, where should, should my windows go? Uh, I'll give you an example. The Park Royal, Royal Hotel in, in Singapore. Imagine you design this space and you have hotel rooms and you decide where are the windows for my hotel rooms. As an example, I want to maximize the view to the land, to this uh, terraces, the screen terraces. This is really the view. And you look out the window, you see green. I mean, it's, a, it's an incredible project, to be honest. Now, the problem is I don't want to be disturbed by the neighbor. I don't want to, I don't want to look into the other person's uh, or the other guest's room. I mean, the, the green probably helps, it blocks the view, but imagine the green would be much smaller and you would actually have a, a clear view. So that could be one way to use that tool. Which windows actually have, which windows are more exposed or which sides are more exposed and which areas are less exposed and therefore I can choose where the windows should go. All right, let's, from this project, let's go to, to ours. Uh, it, of course, it's completely different. It's a different topic, but imagine for a moment that this would be a hotel with individual kind of um, huts. Okay, we just built the, the thing from scratch and it's easy for you to understand. I will throw this away and I gather my, my model again pick this up here. Okay. These are my huts. They're just very simple cylinders at the moment. We can start to think about the design of these now. This is uh, really the best moment. I take my view analysis tool here. This is the view percentage. I have four types, as we discussed last time, four types of how, to, how this operates. And we really focusing on the people who stay in there and see uh, and use the, the view type number two which is one here because it's actually five different modes, um, but it's it's only counts to four because zero is one of the one of the types. Okay, let's get the a number slider already restricted to four, so we cannot go we cannot go over. The resolution I keep. There's nothing I need to do really. The geometry is my geometry. This here, this stuff. And the context, the context, um, actually in this case, because I want to test these among each other. So <laughs> they actually block each other's view. So the context is also these buildings and the ground, this ground floor. So I will put this in here as well. So I have the context is this one. And of course I could uh, include the other contexts and maybe that's a good, a really good idea. Actually, I can include everything except my my buildings here. This is oh, really everything. Actually, sorry, I can take this and just put it in here. Now, just make sure that everything is um, facing upwards. I think we fixed that already. That you need to make sure that this is happening. Just to test a bit what, if this is all okay. Yeah, I think that they are all up. They're all the correct orientation. That's important. Now I have placed everything in here. I will hide these buildings. Uh, 
I can close this. I, I just uh, turn off the view to these. They're, they're still here. This is all okay. And then this one I also turn off. The, I turn off here. So now we have this. Okay, we need to determine a grid size. We can go a bit smaller here. I would almost go 0 0.2, place this in here. Object offset, we don't really, really need that. Um, remember this one, the geo block, this was about true or false is, um, it's about um, the objects being transparent or not. So it's already already setting the, yeah, we don't need to re reuse that. So this geo block means if the object, the geometry is opaque or not, and it's automatically set default based on what thing you choose here, based on what type of analysis you choose here. So we don't really need to change that, but we need this Boolean toggle anyway, so we can place this here. And now we can already run it. There's nothing else uh, which hinders us from not doing this. Yeah, it's already done. Now you could argue that, um, so what does it tell you? Okay, it tells you that if we, if it's about to place entrances and windows, it tells you that um, the green areas, everything screen, has a good view to the to the uh, to the content. It's not blocked by anything. Uh, but what what this also means that means the red ones are the ones which are more exposed to the neighbor. So in case, for example, I would have if I would decide windows on these outside, I would make sure that they are not if they are hotels, by the way that they are not uh, within that zone where the neighbor might see the, see inside your hotel room or inside your hut. And equally here inside, I could decide where's the least amount of exposure to place, to place any windows, which is probably in these areas here. So I could, I could argue that these are the areas where I place windows. That's it. <laughs> I mean, you could now go into your Ladybug color range and oh no sorry not the color range the the Ladybug legend parameters and place this here you can place this here and then you could play with the minimum and maximum if you want to get a better output here or like a more clear output so what, what I'm saying is what, what I'm trying to say is that placing here some sliders By the way, I have 68% here on the top. That means we, we talk about percentage. Now I could place here 100. That means no, no view obstruction. And you should see this change now. Yes, so now you can see that it has changed. There's actually nowhere in, in, in here is is a place where it's blocked, where, where the view is 100% um, clear, clean, which will never happen anyway. But I can also, I can also place the minimum here and say what's zero. Okay, that's it, <laughs> zero. Okay, um, in order to speed this up a bit, because it's getting quite slow, I could put here maybe one so it's a bit more coarse here. That also is maybe not a bad thing. I'm actually thinking of is it a, would it be a good idea to facet this uh, this structure? But now we could, for example, go here and see what is still acceptable. I mean, we let's say eight, let's say seventy percent, and what is the minimum? That gives us. A a bit of an understanding for outside so you could play with that it doesn't help inside inside it's like all is just red so we could um, yeah we could identify here a bit where which areas are could be potentially a bit better and it's it's very clear here in the in the model uh, 
I put this to 0 0.2 again so we have a, a nice a thumbnail for the video. Just want to show you something really cool because I'm just here with for my um, thumbnail. Now what you can do because as you can see here the, this legend is always like hidden by something it's very annoying. The cool thing now in Ladybug is that you can actually orient this legend to your camera. So you could take this this is the Ladybug orient to camera tool and then because the legend is a, is a geometry you can place it here and now see it's it was aligned to your camera. Now we can we can uh, place it. We can check our view. Let's do this. So we want to have this nice in the middle, and we can uh, refresh this by just placing a. See, as soon as I move this, it's gonna refresh with a boolean toggle, and we can also place the position here. That's also nice. So let's have a point input and we can just take this and place it here oops no it's at one point and we can of course move this around isn't that cool <laughs> um all right oh by the way yeah <laughs> this is the only problem here we need to also hide this that's what not not what i wanted but you can do this, of course. There's always a workaround. That's always good. So I don't want to see this legend, of course, here. I want to see only this legend. Now, now the result is gone. Okay, now I can put here a mesh. Mesh and just place this here. Then, oh, no, no, no. Now, <laughs> okay. That was, of course, wrong. Mesh, this one. Okay, now see, you can actually show the mesh separately. And now we have it. All right, I hope that helps. And let's see you in the next video. Ciao.